Hey everyone! I made this video in Comfy UI using the Framepack tool, specifically its upgraded version, Framepack F1. Notice that this segment features a series of complex movements distributed over time, with smooth, seamless transitions from one movement to another, as if it was shot in a single take, even though the moment where the guy sits down and where he picks up the book were generated separately. What's changed in the new version of Framepack and why is it now possible to create high-quality long videos? In this tutorial, we'll break down the workflow and I'll share the details and nuances. You can download this workflow from my Patreon, linked in the description. First, a few words about the differences between the new and old versions. The original Framepack model uses a bi-directional approach where video generation can occur in reverse, from end to start. This ensures stability, but limits the dynamics of movements. Framepack F1. This is a unidirectional model. F1 stands for Forward Version 1, which predicts only future frames based on previous ones. This approach allows for more dynamic and expressive movements since the model is less constrained in variability. In Framepack F1, a new anti-drifting technology has been introduced. Drifting is when errors accumulate from frame to frame, ultimately causing the image to degrade and lose its original quality. This new anti-drifting technology helps maintain video stability and quality throughout the entire sequence, even when generating longer clips. The new version also features faster generation speeds. Improved handling of dynamic scenarios, such as prompts, has been implemented. Additionally, the ability to connect one or more lores has been added. Now let's talk about installation. The developer of Framepack is the same team that created ControlNet and the scene relighting tool, IC Light. On the GitHub page, you can find detailed information on how to run the engine in the Gradio interface and explore examples. A person named Kajay adapted extensions for use in Comfy UI. Here's their page. Shmiel Ronan improved Kijay's work. We'll be using their version. The easiest way to install the extension is to download a ready-made workflow from the developer, if available. Go to the Example Workflow folder and download, for example, this workflow. Then drag it into your comfy UI environment. Some nodes turn red. Go to the manager and install the missing nodes. Don't forget to update comfy UI first and run update all. Now we need to download all the necessary models. Go back to Kijay's page. There's a link here to download text encoders, CLIP models, and VAE. Now we need to download all the necessary models. Place them in the appropriate folders. Everything except the diffusion model. We'll download that from another source. Follow the link. I'll be using this model. It's lighter, and my graphics card can handle it fine. This model is more demanding on graphics card specs, but delivers even higher quality results. Now let's take a look at my workflow for generating the reading guy. Essentially, it's the basic workflow we downloaded from the examples. The only thing is, I added a node to output the last frame, assigned a variable, and duplicated the block of top nodes to clearly show both the first video and its continuation. Here, I call the last frame and generate the continuation based on it. But let's dive a bit deeper. This text node lists all the models to download and which folders to put them in. A node for enabling and disabling a group of nodes. We move to the second group once we're satisfied with the first group's results. In the upgraded version of Framepack, the developers added support for connecting one or more LoRa's. I'm adding my own trained LoRa, so that, for example, even if a reference frame shows the character looking in a different direction or positioned sideways, the similarity isn't lost when the camera angle returns and the program knows what the character should look like. Diffusion model loader, here we assign a variable. This avoids drawing long lines from the first group of nodes to the second. It's more convenient and cleaner. Double clip model loader. Check your models. If the wrong clip model is selected, you might not see error messages, but the generation result will be a black screen. That happened to me. Assign variables to all loaded models. Clip vision loader with a variable. VAE model. Reference image loader. Resize node, in case, for example, the reference image is too large. This will be the resolution of our video. Positive prompt. The node is called frame pack and code and it allows you to write prompts frame by frame. For example, at zero seconds, the character is lying down. At five seconds, they stand up, and so on. 
It's better not to write overly long chains here, because if one segment doesn't satisfy you, you'll have to regenerate everything, wasting your computer's resources. It's better to move other movements to the next generation. Here, we set the video duration in seconds. A new node, Frame Pack Sampler F1, introduced with the upgraded version. Everything here is well optimized, so it's best not to experiment too much with the settings. For example, I tried increasing the CFG value, and the video quality dropped immediately. Here, I only adjusted the number of steps in the seed, but it's better to try it yourself than take my word for it. VAE decode tealed. Here, I added a node that outputs the last frame of the video and assigned it a variable. Preview of the last frame. Enable the second group. Call the last frame. Everything else is the same, just with a different prompt describing the next movement. There's also a node here that outputs the last frame of the second video with a different variable. Next, you can replace the first reference image and start generating the next round. Frame Pack also allows generating video based on the first and last frames. I'm not using that here, but I'll quickly show how it works. Here are two connectors linked to the first reference image. And here, we can connect the last frame. The program will create an interpolation between them. Copy this structure. In the image loader, set the last frame and connect the connectors. Then, you can stitch all the generated episodes together in any video editor. If you found this video helpful, give it a like and subscribe to the channel.